Amen, amen. So if you have your Bibles, we're going to be in Acts 2 today. And if you're just joining us, you missed last week, we started a series called Lift, specifically speaking to Holy Spirit and the next level, you and the next level. And last week, we focused a lot on kind of the setup of the identity of Holy Spirit. Do you remember some of those that we talked about, Holy Spirit as our, as our helper and how that translates to our comforter, our counselor, our convictor, and how that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a good thing. There's nothing wrong with that. And if you remember, we spoke of two of, we'll say, three relationships, because we're going to get to the third one today, that we experience with Holy Spirit, um, specifically as Jesus showed us in John 14, 17, you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you, right? And so the, the two that we focused on last week was the Holy Spirit with you. So that is always, it's always been around, even since the very, very beginning, before there was a beginning, right? The Holy Spirit was there. But Holy Spirit is with us always. We don't have to invite. Sometimes we have to say it on the outside so that we can recognize the identity and the person of the Holy Spirit with us, right? But Holy Spirit is always with us, even, even if we do not call on Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Holy Spirit is a part of every bit of salvation. That, that's basically, God, it would, He loves us enough to not let us be happy until we find our rest in the Holy Spirit. So that it's that, that constant robbing of peace, or when things are not aligned, and they're not quite right, or that we have not acknowledged Holy Spirit that he's still with us. But once we receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior, now Holy Spirit comes to be in us. So it's God with us and God in us, the Spirit of the living God in us. And we know this to be true, and we see this because in John 20, verses 20 through 23, I want to give you just a little bit of context before we read this. This is the disciples... And they are, they are in a, a real despondent, hopeless place. They've seen Jesus be crucified, be buried. There's like been some rumors of people possibly seeing Jesus, but they have not. And so what we see here is Jesus' first appearance to them in a locked upper room. He just shows up, boom. And we talked about this earlier this year and, and how he revealed himself to Thomas and he met him in his space of doubts. But this is, this is the revelation of Jesus reappearing to them for the first time. And as he pops in the room, he says this, verse 21, Jesus said to them again, peace be with you. Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. And if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. And if you withhold forgiveness from any, it is withheld. Now, i got to point out something here because it's real, real interesting. Is that this is a powerful event. It's, it's, it's the reappearance. It is the fulfillment of prophecy. It is the completion of that which has been talked about for centuries. Of Jesus dying on the cross, right? Becoming that sacrifice. So that therefore, through him, we now receive forgiveness through Jesus. But also, let's not overlook this, because it's real easy to see. Right there, it says, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. And so through the forgiveness of sin, through Jesus Christ, Jesus then also imparts the Holy Spirit. That's powerful. Powerful. But here's the thing. That's not an empowering event. And there is a difference. And we're going to get more into that in just a moment. That's a tease. You like that? Yeah, they call it, that's a, it's like a tease. It's, it's what's coming up, right? Coming soon. Today, I've titled today's message, if you're taking notes, More Than a Feeling. <laughs> Some of you are already laughing because you're singing the song, and I'm not going to do it. Don't care. Not that guy. More than a fee. Oh, maybe I am. Maybe I am, right? When we think of... Relationship with Holy Spirit, there's God with us, God in us, but then also there needs to be God through us. 
But that power is more than a feeling. It's power, like actual power. We're going to unpack that in just a second. But I have a question for you. Does it ever seem like maybe more people have more power than you? And I'm not talking about physical strength or I get up to bat and I'm nowhere near John Furrow status. Just not. It's going to be a grounder and it's going to be fine. Still counts. Still on base, right? I'm not talking about that kind of power. I'm talking about others seem to like have it more together. They have more peace, more joy, <laughs> right? More, more just, just this inner calm. Or maybe it's this, this patience that they possess that just seems, well, supernatural, right? Does it ever seem like people have more kindness or more self-control or they have just more hope? They have more power. Well, I would venture to say perhaps maybe that they do. But there's a power for those who would receive it, because that's, that's kind of the thing, that is readily accessible to each and every one of us. But we've got to, we've got to yield to that. We're going to get to that in just a second. If we move forward into Acts 1, and this is Jesus talking. Acts 1, verse 8. Perhaps you've heard this verse. If not, here you go. I'll read it to you. It says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. You will receive power. The, the Greek translation for this word, it's the, the Greek word of dunamis. And it it means what it sounds like when we, we define it and we translate it to the word power, but it's so much more. It's, it's a force, like just a real miraculous, powerful force. In fact, some would say maybe even explosive. In fact, from this word, we actually get the word dynamite. So there, there's maybe kind of summation of what this type of power is, but it's an unlimited, incomprehensible, phenomenal power. And I think of that power available to us, I think of Aladdin. Some of you are like, what? And you think of like Genie or the original one, where it's like, phenomenal cosmic power. Itty bitty living space. <laughs> Come on, right? Okay. Holy Spirit power. And see, those that have not received the Holy Spirit through Jesus miss out. But so too often, so do the actual followers of Jesus miss out on the power Holy Spirit provides through us, through us. 2 Corinthians 12, 9, and this is Paul recounting Jesus. Each time he said, my grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. My power works best in weakness. Think about that for wherever you're at right now. So now I am glad to boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ can work through me. I got to tell you, anymore, this, this, this verse is more and more relevant to me. And I, and I think of boasting in my weakness. I don't like to do that. Does anybody else? I need help all the time. Anybody else like to do that? Because you sound whiny when you do that, yeah? We just do. Or at least maybe that's what I feel like. But, like, there's so much anymore, I just, can't, I just can't figure it out. I just can't make it happen. I just can't get over this. Um, this is not in my notes. Um, but I just felt impressed upon. Uh, Saturdays can be, can be kind of a thing for me. It's supposed to be a day of rest, and we, we hang out with family, and we, we, we try to be intentional not to do a whole lot of work. But then, like... Saturday nights, it's just this thing just wells up, and it's like, okay, tomorrow, here it is. Sunday's coming. And sometimes for the minister, that's not, that's not a good thing. It doesn't mean I don't look forward to seeing your faces, because I do. But if we're talking about boasting and weakness, there are so many times I'm sitting there before I come up and go, I don't got it. God, I don't got it. I guess you're just going to have to do it. <laughs> See how silly that sounds? That's a refusal from the very get-go to actually yield 
to the power that's readily available inside me. The power of the living God. See, living by the power of the Holy Spirit doesn't mean that life gets easier. It doesn't. It means I have what I need anytime I need it to go through it. And, and here's the thing. That may not look like what I think it should. But I have everything I need. Because I have God in me. Amen. Holy Spirit in me. So what do we do in these moments? In the, these, the, the, the fire, the fire in the refiner's fire. Well, you have to fight fire by being on fire. Amen. Fight fire by being on fire. I want to take a, a small deviation here um, and, and get kind of nerdy on you. Have you heard of these things called the mega fires? No? Just check out the news. Anytime you see a, a, a fire burning out of control, any place in the United States, literally any place, especially California or some of those, uh, those places like the, the northern parts of the country where there's a lot more forests, and they, in recent years, in modern times, um, what would used to be considered a rare occurrence of, of a fire burning of like, up to like five million acres, um, it's now not uncommon to see fires that can burn up to a million, 10 million. That's 10 is more than five. And so let's go with that one. A lot of fire and a lot of acres, a lot of things being burnt up. This is becoming a common occurrence. There are fires taking place right now. Did you know that? Right now. And experts, they, they blame it on three things. One is First is, is drier climates and, and drought conditions that have, have built up over the years. We also see that people are living closer and closer now to fire-prone areas, therefore making themselves further at risk and, well, let's just be honest, adding more potential fuel to these fires. But the third one, and this is the one that's the most interesting to me, is that we've gotten too good at fighting fires. Now wait, what? What are you talking about? Well, it's actually, believe it or not, it's actually natural for a forest to have a fire about every 15 years um, because it burns up all of the debris, all the, the leaves, all of the whatever it is, the trees that have fallen down that um, would, would be considered fuel for a fire so that they don't rage out of control. And what we've done is that we've rushed to put them out so that now this fuel just actually builds up it becomes a thing where now we're just actually setting ourselves up for an even greater fire because there's going to be too much to burn. Isn't that interesting? Where am I going with this? Glad that you asked. So the solutions, and I'll get to it in just a second, the solutions is that we have to stop running to every fire and put them out, or we could have what are called controlled burns. Have you heard of these? where we'll actually fires that are intentionally set and monitored to make sure they don't rage out of control so that when it, a fire does come, it doesn't have as much fuel. And we wouldn't set those things and see these mega fires going on. Today, we are seeing more fires of sin and spiritual mega fires than ever before. It, you know, there's all kinds of underlying things and causes, you could see that, whether it's moral relativity, whether it's chasing our feelings and, and fulfilling that and happiness or just never being full. The results of these are spiritual fires. So you see lives are being destroyed. Uh, the suicide rate is greater than the murder rates nowadays, an epidemic of cutting and people just doing this so they can feel something or that's fires of substance abuse or sexual abuse or sexual commodification the loss of identity, people slipping into eternity without God, spiritual megafires. And we need to be set on fire to combat these fires. The language of fire, you've heard, I, I want to receive the fire of the Holy Spirit, finds its root within where I told you to go, and that's, where was it? Acts where? Two, thank you for those who were listening, who are there. I know online community, you were already there, and that's, that's wonderful. And, and I want to read to you verse 1. It says, When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. So just pause there for a second. To set this up, Jesus has ascended. He has commissioned 
his followers to go, therefore, and make disciples, baptizing in the name of the Father and the Son and the what? Holy Spirit. Yeah. And so that's happened. They're meeting. They're praying. They're up in this room. And then verse 2, and suddenly, and suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting and divided tongues of fire as it appeared to them and rested on each of them. This is the empowering event that we were talking about. So Jesus gave the Holy Spirit to them, a powerful thing, but they were not empowered by the Holy Spirit. It is now from this point, the baptism, that the Holy Spirit has fallen upon the followers, that now the power of the Holy Spirit will be going through them. And they will be living by this power. Did you know that today is actually Pentecost Sunday? I wish I could say, I'm going to be honest with you, for all the strategizing and planning that we do with the message playbooks and things like that, I wish I could say I knew we were going to land on this message on this day. And guess what I found myself doing on Monday? Wait a second. Siri, when is Pentecost Sunday? Oh, it's May 19th, 2024. (laughs) Well, that's incredible. Holy Spirit knew. I got goosebumps just now. See, if you think anything is an accident, even when you, you plan and plan and plan, no. You were supposed to be right here, right now. Or if you're listening to this message at another time, this is when it is. Holy Spirit has brought you to, God with us, brought you to this moment so that you may receive the power of Holy Spirit, and therefore live through that. Through that. Ooh. See, we need to be lit up by the Holy Spirit. And here's the deal. You can't burn what's already burning. And so when we go through these fires and these things, you can't burn what's already burning. You may recall last week we talked about the power of the Holy Spirit, and and I used the illustration of the shuttle and how that was an, an example of explosive not exploding. Right? It's that focused power. In the same way, a controlled burn is the same thing. It's controlled. It's powered. You can't burn that because it's already burning. And so, therefore, you're not prone to the effects of the mega fire. In fact, some, way, some ways you extinguish it before it even begins. Hallelujah. I'm going to move forward, and I'm going to say something. I'm not going to go into verse 4, and I'm not avoiding it. I want you to know that. We're going to talk more at length about that, specifically in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And so that's also a tease. See you next week. Huh? Do you like that as well? But we're going to talk about receiving the power of the Holy Spirit and therefore living forward within that. Because we're talking about the helper and accessing all that comes with that. We have to receive it. We have to be baptized in it. And so when I think of that, the word that I love that helps me out the most, even as I'm still trying to live in step with the power of the Holy Spirit resting inside of me, the word is yield. Yield. How many people love that word? Word. Yield is your action. Oftentimes we hear that and we think of the yield signs around town And it's kind of like, you know, I could stop. I don't have to, right? I think of that every time I enter into a roundabout. The other person is clearly just sizing me up, right? And so I have a choice. Am I going to yield to that traffic or I'm just going to like, am I going to gun it and see what happens? We we can all be real here, right? (laughs) Yield. We don't often like that word because that sometimes means that we have to stop. But if you look up the definition of yield, and I don't think that this is a coincidence, give way under force or pressure, relinquish possession of something, give something up, or produce or provide. That sounds like an action to me. That doesn't sound like stopping. It doesn't sound like slowing down or not moving. It sounds like actually something taking place for my good. Well, that changes everything. 
Remember we talked about on the other side, oftentimes when we throw the word the even, and I've done it a few times in this message, I'm trying to be more intentional about the Holy Spirit instead of saying Holy Spirit, recognizing there's a person with a personality on the other side that desires relationship with me, already residing in me. Maybe I should acknowledge it as such. And so by yielding to Holy Spirit, especially when it comes to baptism of the Holy Spirit, that is your empowering event. That's it. See, we, we see within Acts 2 their empowering event when Holy Spirit came upon the scene. And just like Jesus does, just like God has in the past, we got to make an entrance. And so that's what you saw. A man was a glorious. But does that mean that if we don't have that same experience that we have not received baptism in the Holy Spirit? No. It just means that's not your experience. And so therefore, that's okay. So when we expect the light show. doesn't mean that Holy Spirit can't do that. Okay? That is still possible today. You have to hear that. So we're not negating it, but we're also saying, hey, God is God. And God can't be put in a box. Can't be conformed to what I think. I can only see what I can see. God, phenomenal, cosmic power. Wow. <laughs> now that was not planned. <laughs> Cheers. Thank you. <laughs> we can have fun, yeah? Yeah. Yes, we can. See, the fact is, our experience will be different. But that should not limit our expectation of how Holy Spirit will work in our lives. Because, listen, it's more than a feeling. It's more than just, ooh, I felt good, I felt, ooh, energized. But yeah, that may happen. Or you may just walk away feeling humbled, quieted, still, like you just encountered the holy God. So there's a reverence that could take place there. And that's just as empowering. Let me tell you, it's just as empowering. It's essentially a new way of doing life, of recognizing the power that is greater than what I can possess is now readily available to me, but I've got to yield. Here, here's the thing, though. When you yield, understand this. Just go ahead and expect opposition. Yeah. Just, I'm telling you right now. See, Jesus wanted his disciples to know and he said it over and over again. You follow me, you will get resistance. Even with the power of the Holy Spirit dwelling inside of you, you're still going to face trials and troubles, and it's not going to be easy. In fact, John 15, verse 18 through 19, if the world hates you, know that it has hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love you as its own. But because you are not of the world... But I chose you out of the world. Therefore, the world hates you. There's something about knowing in advance that something is going to be difficult. It's almost like setting your shock absorbers, right, for the rough terrain that's ahead. And so when we say, I want to receive the power of Holy Spirit, the baptism, just know once you do, you're going to get tested. You're going to have things fly at you because you've committed to follow after Jesus, and so therefore we can't expect anything greater or different than what Jesus experienced within that same thing. Were there people that loved him? Absolutely. They were his followers. Were there people that hated him? Yep, they crucified him. So guess what you can, you can expect? I feel like I'm just really, really pumping you up. What's the thing that we always say? Welcome to Springs of Life. We're so glad that you're here with us. Now, here's your punch in the face <laughs> or stomach, whatever it is, right? No, you will be attacked. It may come in the form of your family, your kids, your marriage, your relationships, and your community. You may even begin to experience some fracturing within that, 
or the temptations that weren't as big of a deal before suddenly are going to be amplified and ramped up, and all of a sudden I'm going to be struggling with these things, or there's going to be the trials that I walk through, and I'm wrestling, and I'm struggling, and maybe even questioning, Holy Spirit, are you actually here? Like, seriously? Shouldn't this be easier? No, your enemy wants to do anything he can to take your eyes off of God from recognizing that there is power that's greater than even those things that you're going through right now. You can expect opposition. But here's the thing. Be encouraged. Boy, I know that sounds trite, when, even when I say it. Because I've had people like, I'm, I, you know, I have a good friend, mentor. I was like pouring out my heart one time of all these things of just, I'm um, walking through, blah, 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 this, this, that, whatever, just checklist. And he's like nodding his head, looking his well, I'm really encouraged. <laughs> and I said, meeting over. What, what is that? That's not what I need. No, that's the, the encouragement in that when you can expect resistance in following Holy Spirit, it's a sign of good things. It's a sign that you are going in the right direction. It's a sign that, well, maybe there are things that are greater at work and I might need to humble myself and trust. Amen. And can I say this? If that's you right now, don't give up. Don't give up. We're not promised easy. We're not promised easy. Romans 8, 26, likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. Helps. For we do not know what to pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us. Look at that, with groanings too deep for words. The Spirit helps us in our weakness. Expect the resistance, it's going to come. But in those spaces, more than ever, we ought to lean in and recognize power of the Holy Spirit dwelling inside us. Um, I found this quote a while ago from Pastor Craig Rochelle, and we've mentioned him before, but he said, we are often weak because we haven't bonded with what makes us strong. Yep. And so how do we experience this empowering, this empowering event? Last point this morning, if you're taking notes, is we need to give Holy Spirit a home. Give Holy Spirit a home. Now, that sounds counter to what I, I, I just said. You've already got Holy Spirit dwelling inside you because you have received the power, excuse me, you have received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, therefore, Holy Spirit residing in me, right? But there is a difference between a house and a home, isn't there? In fact, I, I often think for, and I'm going to offend some of you who love camping, this is, this is just why I'm, I'm, I'm not big on camping, because it's a house or a tent, some of you an RV, but that's not a home, Right? At least not to me. I mean, if camping was so awesome, then why are all the bugs trying to get inside my house? <laughs> That's Jim Gaffigan. I can't take responsibility for that one, but I mean, think about it, right? There's a difference between a house and a home as a space that I occupy or a space that I actually live in, that I reside, that I dwell. And a home for Holy Spirit is a cultivated relationship. It's the recognition that, no, you are there with me. You're in me. You, you go where I go. And that power is available in any space, in any circumstance, in any trial and tribulation, in any celebratory triumph. You are there. And so, like any relationship, I have to, if I want it to be a good one, I have to invest in it. I've got to, just, and that equals time. That equals devotion, right? That equals, well, acknowledgement to start with. But how many times do we go an entire day or maybe even days without acknowledging the presence of the Holy God in your life when you're wrestling with addiction, when you're lacking in self control, when you're wanting healing or when we're, we're worrying, we're fearful of what tomorrow will bring or what even the next moment is going to take place or we've forgotten who we are in Christ Jesus. 
Or we're just looking for direction, so we're trying to seek it ourselves and trying to find ways to find peace in the ways that I can find it and not actually leaning into the, the fruit that can come from relationship with Holy Spirit. And so I'm missing out, therefore, on joy and ultimately losing hope. Losing hope. And I would ask you, do you want the power of Holy Spirit in you working through these things? I do. I do. We've been renewed and given new spiritual life. That's an amazing, powerful thing. And when we deny the empowering of the Holy Spirit, we are denying the new life that we have been given. It's just as simple as that. It's coming up short. And so we have to give the Holy Spirit a home inside of us. We have to yield to that power. We have to recognize that there is a greater power, and we have to receive it. We have to receive it. Ephesians 3, verses 14 through 19. I know it's a bit of scripture, but please listen to this. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with the power through his spirit in your inner being. So that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Filled with all the fullness. Some translations say the completeness or the abundance of God. The ab- think about that for just a second. Especially in these spaces where we feel like we have lack. Where it's just not enough. I want to give up. No. Filled with the abundance of God. That says more than I actually need. Think about that. How do we get that? How do we get that? We have to yield. We have to receive the baptism, the filling. I mean, you, you name it all down the list. Yield to the power and say, I want that. I want to acknowledge. I want to take this relationship that I have with Holy Spirit to the next level. Yep. It's time to, to move on and to move up. Because outside of that, something is incomplete. And with Holy Spirit's power, nothing is missing. Because when there's abundance, there is no lack. Listen, it's not going to get easier. Some of us, we're going to get up, get out these doors, and it's going to hit us as soon as we do. Not going to get easier. What power are you going to, are you going to operate under at that point? Yours? How far will that get? Power of the Holy Spirit. Readily available to have what you need, when you need it, any time you ask for it. Yep. That's the power. I want to do something that's a little different um, today, I'm going to invite Sarah to come up. In a moment, we're going to have a moment of response. And, and the response today, when we're talking about the power of the Holy Spirit and yielding to that power, we want to give opportunity for you to, res- to have that empowering event. And listen, if, if you've, you've never experienced this before, it, it's not something scary, Okay. And oftentimes we, we look at it and go, oh, I've heard about this, and this is when I start speaking mumbo-jumbo and, and all those things, and then, then, then what? People start running around, and it's going to get, get freaky. No, 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 no. Holy Spirit is a gentleman. We're going to talk more about that next week. God is not a God of confusion or chaos, but of order and a sound mind. And so what we're going to do, we've asked some of our pastors and some of our other leaders to be prayer teams this morning, and we've asked them to we'll fill the space up here. 
And if you want to have the empowering event, the baptism, receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, to yield to that power, we're going we're gonna to lay hands, as it says in Scripture, on you. We're going to pray, and we're going we're gonna to expect that to take place. And here's the thing. You may speak in tongues, and you may not. This is your event. This is your moment. And I want to take two steps back because um, if you've not made Jesus your Lord and Savior, that needs to happen first. So we can experience the forgiveness, the removal of sin, the creation of something new through the life and love of Jesus Christ. And so if you've never done that and you want all of these things, well, let's just do that now, eh? And then we're going to open it up if you would like to receive baptism in the Holy Spirit. I'm going to invite you to come see any one of these, these folks. They'll pray with you. We're going to do that. Or if you need to re-up in some ways and maybe, maybe you have been living not really acknowledging that power. This is a great time to say, you know what, I, I want to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And so I'm going to ask you just, wherever you're at right now, um, would you just, let's close our eyes. I, I do that as a, as a way of helping me to, to focus a little bit greater on who God is. God is love. God loved me. Not because of what I did, not because of anything I could do or what he thought I should be. No, he just loves me. God loves me. God's not mad at you. God wants better for you. But that means surrendering. Recognizing that I only experience communion, relationship, Holy Spirit residing inside of me, going from being with to in by acknowledging that I have things that separate me from experiencing that. It's the, the areas of sin. It's the ways in which I make myself God and put myself above him by trying to operate on my own. But God loves me. And we know this because he sent his son, Jesus Christ, for me to pay the penalty, the blood guiltiness of sin in my life, to be the sacrifice through his death for that sin. The penalty has been paid. But the hope goes beyond that in that Jesus rose again to new life. Therefore, bringing me into that space as I recognize that he is my savior, the one who's delivered me from these things. So that I now experience new life through him, Jesus, my savior. And I surrender and say, I will follow the way of Jesus by making him my Lord, my leader. And so God, we confess that now, that we are sinners in need of a Savior, that there is nothing that we can do to separate ourselves from our sin, to make us better, to make us pure. But we acknowledge that you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to die to pay that penalty on the cross for our sins. And we believe that he didn't stay dead, but that he resurrected And so that now we can experience new life with him. And we acknowledge that Jesus has given us in this moment the Holy Spirit to reside inside of us. And so Holy Spirit, we say thank you for being there. And now in this moment, we want to be empowered by the Holy Spirit.
We love you, God. Thank you for this moment. Thank you that you brought us to this place right here, right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.